Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Sikon. S-I-E-K-O-N. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Uh, this battery is currently running for under $200. And I really want to find out how they can make it that inexpensive. So we're going to do a deep dive into this battery and actually tear it down to see what corners they actually cut in order to make this battery so inexpensive. On top, they do have a user's manual and a, a quality certification. So that's good to see right there. Okay, it says on the front, it says Sycon uh, Ideas for Energy. It has the nominal energy, which is 1.28 kilowatts, kilowatt hours. Uh, the nominal voltage, which is 12.8 volts. Rated capacity is 100 amp hours. And max continuous charge and discharge current is 100 amp hours. And then it also has the product name, the model number, uh, and the manufacturer and address. Let's see, the side has nothing. And on this side, this looks like the front. And it kind of gives you the same information, but just in a different format. All right. The, uh, the terminal bolts are connected on there when you first get it. So they're eight millimeter terminal bolts and it looks like they're probably 16 millimeters in length. They do have washers and lock washers attached to the bolt, which is always nice. Okay, the height of the battery is uh, a little over eight and a half inches. The length, a little under 13 inches. The depth, the depth is about six and a quarter inches. And the weight is 22.3 pounds. Okay, when you receive your battery, the first thing that you should do is check the voltage at the terminals to make sure that the battery is at a proper charge when you receive it. I would say it should be between 13.1 volts and 13.2. So let's go ahead and see what this one is. Okay, and the voltage is 13.17, so that is perfect. All right, the next thing you'd wanna do is go ahead and charge it all the way up to 100% and then do a discharge test to make sure that you're getting your 100 amp hours that you paid for. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, the test is complete on the Sycon 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the test results. All right, and as you can see at the bottom, uh, the beginning voltage was 13.8. The cutoff voltage I set for nine volts and the capacity turns out to be 105.11 amp hours. So that is 1335.11 watt hours. As you can see, the discharge curve looks really good. Uh, it, starts, it starts way up here, you know, at 13.8, and the discharge curve is flat all the way down, you know, until it gets to about, oh, about what, 12.2, 12.1, and then it just drops off. And that's exactly what lithium iron phosphate batteries should do. So this, uh, this all looks really good. Capacity is great. So what we're gonna do while this battery is completely discharged, uh, we're gonna go ahead and tear it down to see what kind of quality they have on the inside. All right, okay. I just had to cut the top off of this battery in order to look on the inside because I tried for about a half hour trying to get under the lid and all I was doing was just chipping away at the lid. I tried to heat it up with a heat gun. All that being said, this is why you shouldn't disassemble your battery. You're basically destroying it. And now odds are I'm never going to use this battery again because it's in this condition. But I wanted to show you the insides of this battery just so you would get a better, a better understanding of how it all works. Okay, let's pop off this top and here we go. I can see that there is foam. There's foam blocks on the inside to keep everything in place. Um, let's see, what we have here is two... A set of wires going to the positive and the negative. It looks like it, they are seven gauge, seven gauge wires. There we go. Now make sure when you're doing this, if for any reason you have to, the last thing you want to do is damage these cells. Because I never, I never do this on my channel. 
I mean, since this battery is basically getting, this case is getting utterly destroyed, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the whole side of the case off to easily get these cells out. Okay, after going full Will Prowse on this battery case, this is what you end up with. Now, what we have here are two, uh, four battery cells in series that make up a 12 volt battery. Uh, we have laser welded bus bars, which is a good thing to see. Uh, and then we have the balance leads that are drilled and screwed directly in to the bus bars. Uh, we have the, the pack is actually on its side, so the batteries are sticking out to the side. Uh, we have our vent caps right here and here, but I see that the vent caps for the other two outside cells are covered up by this by this high density foam. So I don't know, uh, I, I feel like that might cause issues if these two cells had had problems. Um, also, uh, yeah, the BMS is on top. Like I said before, we have a seven gauge, and actually now that I'm looking at it, the, the negative is thinner than the positive. So this, this is a seven gauge wire. I, it's almost like this is a six gauge wire. And that's, I find that very odd. So we have to consider this wiring configuration a seven gauge wiring configuration because you have to go with the thinnest wire in the series. Uh, also, there's a seven gauge wire going to the uh, B negative. Uh, our BMS is, uh, I think probably, you know what? I bought a BMS like this for my 24 volt system and it is honestly the cheapest BMS I could find. Here's our, here's our balance leads right here, and they're glued in, which is good. Uh, the BMS is glued to this plate, which actually has some, some fiberboard in between the, the plate. And it's not a plate, it's like a piece of like, it's kind of like a thin piece of foam. And then the carbon fiberboard, and then the cells. So that's good, that's good layering. It's not just sitting around top. And it's glued on and taped on, so it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Okay, and there is also a, um, I was able to access the QR code right here on the battery cell. And the manufacturer is unknown, uh, cell type is LiPo4, uh, model number or model code unknown, capacity unknown, energy unknown, production city unknown. Everything about this is unknown except for the production date, which is 2-6-2023. So this, these cells were made uh, almost a year ago. And then I scan this cell, and it is also all unknown except for the production date is 1-6. So uh, the production dates of these cells aren't in the same order either. They're just, they probably just grab cells and put them together. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do some uh, high amperage testing. And with this, with this thing out of its case, we'll really be able to see uh, the amount of heat that's coming off the wires, any kind of heat coming off the cells or the battery pack itself. And so it'd be really interesting to see. So let's check it out. Okay, I've got the, uh, the Sycon battery all wired up for the high amperage test. And this thing looks super dangerous. But what's going on here is I have an amp clamp and I have a voltmeter. So we can watch those both at the same time. Uh, and I just have multiple uh, negative and positive connections going to the battery so that way these, uh, the, the inverter can handle uh, all the juice that I'm going to be pushing out of this battery. Uh, I'm going to have a thermal camera on there so we can see it. And also I got a fire extinguisher just in case things go super wrong. And of course I'm wearing safety glasses. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do about a hundred and I think it's about 110 to 120 amps. Here we go. And we are going to put it on 1300 watts max sear. Start. All right. It's got cold water in there. So let's see our amperage. Our amperage is going up. The voltage is down to 12.8, 12.77. Amperage is now 113 and the voltage is staying steady at 12.7. Got my timer set for five minutes. So we'll let this go for five minutes and uh, we'll see what it's like after that. Okay, it's been over five minutes. So let's go ahead and look at the temperature of the battery and look at that, would you? It looks like the blue cable 
and the black cable are the, the warmest spots. The black cable is looking to be about 135 degrees Fahrenheit and this blue cable is looking to be about 156 degrees Fahrenheit. The BMS itself is relatively cool. It's pretty nice. It's only about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. The rest of the battery pack is pretty cool. The, the, the cells are totally fine. So everything is actually within spec. Uh, this cabling is actually rated for uh, 200 degrees Celsius. So uh, it is well below uh, any kind of danger. And all the rest of the cabling uh, totally looks fine. Okay, and after six and a half minutes, We've been pulling 113 amps continuous and the battery voltage is down to 12.56. So once I shut this off, you'll see the voltage on the battery go right back up. Right now. And there it goes. It goes right back up to 13.1. It'll probably climb all the way back up to 13.2. So I'm gonna let this cool down for just a few minutes um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do like a 230 30 amp test to see if it will actually pull that amount of amperage. In all honesty, it shouldn't. It, sh it should shut off after, uh, I'm gonna let it run for a minute. And if it doesn't shut off, then uh, that's cause for concern. Okay, well it's been a few minutes. I went ahead and added a griddler to the mix. That pulls like another 100, I don't know, 120, 120 amps. So we might be looking at like 230, 230 amps uh, being pulled from this battery, maybe 240. But we're gonna go ahead and just light up the, uh, the new way first, get it back up to 100, you know, 113 amps, and then we're gonna kick on that griddler and we're gonna see how long this can stay uh, powering. So let's go ahead and do it. Start the griddler. I'm sorry, start, we're starting the new wave. Let's go ahead and start the timer. Okay. We're doing 113 amps. We're back down to 12.65 volts. So let's go ahead and kick on the griddler. And it shut off, it shut off immediately. That, that is perfect. Okay, so what do I think of the Sycon 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery? Well, I did a complete teardown of this battery. As you can see, I mean, the case is completely destroyed. Um, but if you're looking for just a budget battery, and I'm talking something that you can get for actually under $200, uh, I, I, would, uh, I would highly consider this one. The, uh, the build quality is, is pretty good. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with the build quality besides these foam, uh, these foam casings covering up a couple of, the, uh, couple of the vents on the cells. I mean, sure, they're using like a, a budget BMS, and the cells are not like name brand, you know, the dates on them are like a month apart and they were unknown manufacturers. Uh, but that's what you expect from a budget battery. You know, you're expecting, uh, you know, budget cells with a budget BMS inside of a case. You know, the, the, wiring, the wiring all looks good. I mean, it's using seven gauge wire for the BMS and I think they use six gauge wire for uh, the positive connection, but, uh, as long as they're not using like 10 gauge wire for the positive connection, I don't care. They can use a thicker wire if they want. But over 110 amps of load, uh, the BMS and the wiring, they were all well below uh, specs for what, they're, what they can actually handle. You know, and all the other things came in on my testing. Uh, you know, it showed over 100 amp hours of capacity. Um, it came in just fine. The build quality is good on the insides. And if you're just looking for capacity, uh, this will do you good. So if you have any questions about the Sycon 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery, please leave them in the comments. I will have this link in my description if you want to look further into it. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.